Today I'm very curious to swatch. I to swatch uh, my collection of uh, this uh, paint I didn't know before called uh, Old Holland. This is made in the Netherlands, of course, uh, and I found out about this brand when uh, I went to see my son uh, who studies in the Netherlands and uh, he studies in Maastricht and there is this huge art store called the Gerstecke and they had this incredible sale of this Dutch brand and I just couldn't resist. Look how pretty they are. They're so old-fashioned. And let's find out and let's swatch them. I have bought some standard colors and some more unusual colors, but I was really too curious to discover this brand. The tubes are small tubes, I think they are five milliliters. On the tubes there is very little information, there is no pigment information. It says made in Holland. There is a code number like B214 here. And uh, there is this uh, leaflet where you can find uh, all the information about the pigments. You look 214 and you find the pigments. Otherwise, there is absolutely no information. There is uh, some information about the um, chemical content. Sometimes, like here, there is contains complex sodium, aluminum, silicate, carbon. But if you look at the pigment composition, either on their official site, uh, or on the leaflet. So called black. There is no information on the tube, which is um, not so handy, but uh, that's the way it is. So I made quite a research to find out about the pigments uh, on each of these tubes, uh, and uh, there was no possibility to pick single pigments uh, in the store because there is no <laughs> indication of pigments used uh, on the tube. So I picked colors that made me curious and uh, only later I found out the pigment content. Uh, let's start swatching. Let's start with um, cobalt yellow, PY40. Oh, oh, this is exploding, my lord. Um, I think I want to put those that are exploding in a half pan, so I'll be back. Okay, so our Aureoline, or Aureoline, I'm not sure. It's another name for cobalt yellow. I'm planning to make a series of video about cobalt colors. This is too small. And Aureoline is one that um, really raises my curiosity because um, it's the only cobalt color that is not so light fast. Um, it is quite fugitive. So brands are proposing re substitutes, replacements for Aureoline. This is um, the genuine pigment, PY40, offered by many brands. And, and I will make a comparison. Um, it's the first time I swatched the genuine PY40 and I find it very beautiful. It's a very greenish in the pan, but uh, once you swatch it, it has a brownish, uh, it has a brownish uh, undertone in mass tone, but it's very, very transparent. Uh, when diluted and it's a beautiful color I think it's uh, it's very interesting too bad is uh, not uh, light fast so this is cobalt yellow the second color is one more yellow I bought it because I was drawn by the name which I found very beautiful many of these older Holland paints have uh, beautiful uh, evocative, uh, inspiring names. This is Indian Yellow Brown Lake Extra. And this is made 
PY 53, this is not exploding, luckily. PY 153, PY 151, that are two deep uh, yellows. PY 151 is often used as a replacement for orolin, and PY 153 is often used as an Indian yellow, like here, or New Gamboge by other brands. It's a very warm, uh, orangey, it's very beautiful. I'm surprised because this brand, which is an artist brand, uh, uses uh, many convenience colors, but they have such a wide range. They have almost 170 colors. Look at the, the palette. They have so many colors that maybe they're meant to be used as they are straight from the palette and not to be mixed, which is a pity because I like to mix colors, but this is a convenience yellow, but it's so beautiful. I think that um, it is their version of Quinacridon Gold Hue because it has two yellows and uh, PI 101, which is uh, um, English red, red iron oxide, and the result is exactly as a Quinacridon Gold Hue. Very, very nice. I'm happy about this. Then we go to one of my go-to colors in urban sketching. I use it for light, which is uh, Naples yellow. And it's made with uh, yellow ochre, PY42, PR101, and PW4, which is uh, oh, zinc white. It is also a bit exploding. They, they tend to explode. So I'm maybe feeling a pan of these two. They're complicated. They tend to explode, maybe because I, I have brought them on a plane. Naples Yellow Extra actually is a real name. It's quite opaque because of the presence of uh, two opaque pigments that are white. PR101 can also be opaque and uh, PY42 Yellow Ochre is also opaque. Um, I don't like this uh, Naples Yellow compared to others. It's not yellow enough for me. It's more Beige, natty, I don't know, it's too opaque, not my cup of tea. You can maybe use it as a flesh tint, absolutely. So in a quick sketch, if you want to sketch people, you can use this um, as a flesh tint, but or maybe in florals, but uh, it's not the type of paint I would use. Uh, I like a glowing Naples yellow. Then we have Naples Yellow Reddish Extra. Let's hope this does not explode. No, not really, a little. Okay. And this is a pinkish version, still white, PY4, PY53, which is uh, nickel titanate yellow and uh, PO34, which is a fugitive pigment. Uh, I'm afraid to say that, uh, I'm afraid to say that uh, Old Holland makes probably beautiful colors, we'll see, but um, it's too much. But uh, they use um, some unusual pigments and they use uh, some fugitive pigments sometimes. Uh, and uh, this is very opaque, very pinkish. Uh, okay, in other colors, I will, in other color, I will not be using much, I'm afraid. I don't like opaque pastel colors. Then we have Scheveningen uh, Yellow Medium, which is PY 120 which is also a bit fugitive. And um, I think that it is only Old Holland that uses this. 
but it's beautiful yellow to be honest um, it's very beautiful honest um, it's a very beautiful yellow it's very glowing it's very clean too bad it's fugitive it's slightly opaque you see the black line here but we see when it dries now we go to a color that i was very curious to try it is golden baroque red on the side it gives a formulation different from the formulation listed on there is a small binder separation on the leaflet and uh, on the side it says po65 which is offered only by old holland It's nickel red and apparently it's only old Holland that offers this pigment and it's a beautiful rusty red. I really love this. It's a um, good alternative to burnt uh, quinacridone orange. It's really a lovely color. This is absolutely worth buying if you find it. It's really, really lovely so happy then we go to bright red and on scarlet oh this also marginally light fast exploding this as well full name for this is old holland bright red and uh, although i think this is uh, slightly fugitive this bright red it's a very beautiful color mm, I like it it's very vibrant it's anthraquinone scarlet it's twin to anthraquinone red and like all anthraquinone uh, colors used in cars uh, and cosmetics uh, it's very vibrant it's beautiful that could be an alternative to cabin red. To PT, too bad it's uh, not so light fast. Now, another pigment that is not light fast is PO34 and it is Scheveningen. Scheveningen is the company name. Scheveningen Red Scarlet. Let's see, this is, looks like an alternative to cadmium orange. Once again, it's a beautiful color, it's cadmium free, but uh, it's not light fast. So it's not a viable option for artist grade paint. It's very opaque. It was used by Maybe Lucas, but it's not really a pigment that uh, other brands would use uh, due to its poor light fastness. So. A little in Crimson Lake Extra. I have a um, video about oh, a little in Crimson and all its possible replacements. Oh, this is very dark, almost cherry like a little in Crimson made with three pigments, PR177, anthraquinone red, not too light fast, PV19, which is uh, quinacridone rose, and uh, PBR23, which is a pigment that uh, I have only met uh, by Sennelier, and it's a uh, reddish brown, light fast pigment. I think this is very beautiful, very, very beautiful. Let's see how it dries, but it's very beautiful um, color. By the way, Old Holland uses the term lake, when you see lake, to indicate their transparent hues. So this is a transparent alizarin crimson. Let's go to rose 
Dore Matter Lake Antique Extra. His name is gorgeous. That's why I bought this. Don't explode, please. And this is very similar as a composition to the previous one. And it is PR 177. This uh, brown 23, PB PBR 23. And PR 168, which is uh, the anthraquinone scarlet that we met before. And it's a warmer version, a warmer version of this uh, crimson. It's really, it's really nice. So this one also, very transparent. If I had to choose between one of these, I would choose the darker alizarin crimson. But this is also very nice. Then there is a pink, uh, old Holland pink medium called Flesh Tint. I think we already had a flesh tint in these uh, Naples yellows, but let's see the difference. There is also some white, uh, a yellow and a red, PR214. It's very similar to the Naples reddish. It's another color that I will not be using very much. I don't know why I bought this. I like the name. Maybe. It's a... It's a pastel pink. It's different from the Naples yellow reddish. Actually, it's more a piggy pink. I wouldn't call this a flesh tint at all. And it's very opaque. I will forget about this. Now we start the violet and purples, which I'm very curious of. They offer a very wide range of violets and purples. This is cobalt violet light. Now the genuine pigment is PV14 of cobalt violet and here there is no trace so it's a convenience it's a it's a hue actually and it's very pale it's a pb73 a blue pv23 dioxazine violet pv19 quinacridone violet and pr112 which is enough to red so it's a mixture of four colors. It's very granulating, maybe because of the PB73, which is a cobalt blue, one blue of the cobalt family. So it's it's quite granulating. It's lovely color. It's not a color that you can mix with other colors. I like to mix my violets because you don't know what can happen if you have, when you have so many colors, you can get the muddy results if you mix with another color, but if you use it on its own, this is quite pretty. It's very delicate, it's not very pigmented, but that's the nature of cobalt violet, and it's very nice. Let's see the dark, uh, let's see it dark version now, which uh, basically has the same composition except for the red. So oh, it's a PB, the cobalt blue, the quinacridone violet, and the dioxazine violet. So it's a bluish version of this color, and it's more pigmented. It's dark. Mm, it's nice. It's a lot of color. It's very pigmented, not so transparent maybe, because cobalt can be a bit opaque, but same granulation properties, and it's, uh, it's lovely actually. These two I like very much. Let's try another violet, which is manganese violet red. Here they use the genuine pigment of manganese violet, which is 
PV16 PV16 You can hear some voices. I'm at home with um, my husband and my son just came back and they're happy to see each other. So this is manganese violet red, a more pigmented reddish violet compared to cobalt, a very cloudy, milky, soft texture, it's very creamy, and I love this. It's also granulating. This is the first time I try maybe this pigment, or I have a Winsor & Newton permanent mold. This is great for sky, for instance. I want this. I want to use this. I want this in a palette. And then I have a blue manganese violet. Mm. Here there is some binder separation. I will try with a toothpick to fix this binder thing because uh, it's really serious. Done. Fixed it. Now we were swatching manganese violet uh, and we loved it. And this is the bluish version. It's very similar, same cloudy textures. This is, there is some extra binder, but um, it's very cloudy and creamy. And it's a dream to use. I love this. How can I have survived until now without using this manganese? So I'm very interested in violets because I use them in shadow a lot. And I think they're very interesting in urban sketching because they create a lovely shadows and in still life as well for shadow. Then we go to another violet, ultramarine violet. PV15, which is the genuine pigment for this. Oof, it's exploding, these two. And this should be granulating, I hope so at least. And this is um, deeper, more bluish. Violet, also suitable for shadows. This blue violet are better for shadows compared to the red ones, but these granulating ones would be great for sky. I see um, a lot of blue in this manganese compared to the red, but it's okay. Yes, it's granulating, it's deep very pigmented that's lovely it's a lovely violet okay mm, binder issues this was quickly fixed with a toothpick now cobalt blue is a hue that I like very much let's take away this binder that I like very much because it's very versatile it's granulating, it's great for sky, it's great for mixes. It's very vibrant, but not too vibrant, not artificially vibrant. It took me a while to discover cobalt blue. I never touched it as a beginner, but now it's probably my favorite, one of my favorite blues. And it's great on its own, it's great when mixed great value range look at this is a lovely lovely cobalt blue i like this very much it's very creamy texture let's go to ultramarine blue deep pp29 a lot of pigment maybe too much mm, this is wonderful it's a lapis lazuli color you know that ultramarine comes from lapis lazuli look at this it's almost a gemstone. This is a beautiful ultramarine. See, deep version, PB29, same pigment. Beautiful blue. Now, wonderful. And now the ultramarine 
blue, the standard version. Hmm, looks lovely already. Hmm, a lot of pigment, maybe too much. But um, you get a lovely mask tone with all this pigment. Look at the difference between these two. This is more almost cobalt hue, but it's very beautiful also. C3, cobalt, ultramarine deep and ultramarine are wonderful. Simply wonderful. It's worth buying them, absolutely. Let's continue the blue with indigo. Never know if I should consider indigo a dark or a blue, but I keep it in the blues in my palette. I use it as a dark blue, very dark blue. I don't use it as a dark by itself. I use it a lot for mixing darks, but not as a dark in itself, but wrong. In this case, it's almost a, a paint gray. It's uh, the first color is PBK9, a, a black. Then Phthalo Blue, PB15, and uh, a red, PR177. Which is, if I'm not wrong, quite fugitive. So this is not what I call an indigo. That would not be my indigo in my palette. It's a gray, it's a dark. It's a lovely dark, actually. It's a lovely gray, but it's a gray. It's not an indigo. So I would not keep this with my blues. <coughs> then we go to manganese blue deep. And that's the last blue. This is also a convenience color. There is uh, cerulean, phthalo, cobalt green or teal, and manganese violet. PB35 being cerulean, PB15. Cyan, PG50, it can be either teal or cobalt green, depends on the treatment. And PB15 is manganese violet. So, let's see. It's a turquoise. It's an interesting color. It's almost a primary blue. Useful for florals. That's lovely for florals. It's different blue. It's very nice one, very nice one, but for pigments, but used on its own, it's lovely. Then we go to Cobalt Blue Turquoise. Here it is, PB36, which is uh, um, Cobalt Blue, Cobalt Turquoise. It's a deep uh, turquoise. It's a version of Cobalt Blue. Cobalt Blue has many different versions, not just PB28, but also its siblings like PB36, for instance. I like PB36 usually. I have a version from my Mary, which I like very, very much. Look at how lovely this is. It is a blue that I really like. This also took me a while to discover because it's not in standard palettes. It's a color that you need to buy in open stock usually. But look at how lovely it is. Turquoise, cobalt blue. Then we have the light version with the most uh, common pigment for teal, which is PG50, cobalt green. Tuck. Okay. And this is the most common uh, Cobalt turquoise used uh, also by Daniel Smith in teal or by Winsor & Newton in their cobalt blue turquoise light. And it's a color that I use a lot because it's opaque and you can use it over your sketches in, uh, in urban sketching, for instance, for fountains or windows or even for sky. It can be very, very nice when watered down. 
And then we have the same pigment with a different treatment, always PG50, processed as my nails are full of glue. Just forgive me, I will wash them now. Same pigment, different treatment, cobalt green. Let's see it. Mm, it's very transparent, completely different result. It's hard to believe it's the same pigment. Let's put more. Mm, it says it has a gummy texture, this one. Too much binder, maybe. And uh, it's, it has a lovely granulation. It's close to Viridian in hue. But um, it's more pigmented, and I think it will granulate once dry. Yes, it does granulate. Now, green earth. Green earth is a color that I often forget to use, which is really a shame because it's a lovely color. I have a version from Rembrandt which I like very much. It's not very pigmented. It's hardly pigmented, actually and uh, it is such a lovely color even for pottery it's so muted this has a, also a very weird texture it's gummy but uh, yes this is basically green earth very delicate not very pigmented slightly visible, lovely, so elegant. I love it for pottery, for teacups, teapots. Very, very lovely. It's PG23, which is the genuine green earth pigment. Then we go to sap green. Sap green has a different recipe in every brand. This makes no exception as it is uh, two yellows, the same yellows that they always use, uh, Indian yellow and coralline, and uh, phthalo green, PG7, and yellow ochre, PY42. Now that there is a lot of pigment, too much, I will try to take some away, let's see, because it was exploding in my hands. And it's quite vibrant, bit artificial sub green. When I started baking, I loved sub green, but now I prefer Hooker's Green, which is single, single pigment PG17. And I, I like maybe Hooker's Green better. This is very, very vibrant. It, it, it's pretty actually. But um, with all these pigments, I wouldn't use it in a mix, just as it is. But it's it's a nice one. It's vibrant. It's a bit artificial. But sap green, it is like this, a bit artificial. And then we finish with greens and we go to earthy tones. Rose Sienna Deep PBR7. Rose Sienna is one of my go-to colors. I sometimes like it better. Then yellow ochre, even for skies. I use it in sky a lot because uh, it's more transparent than yellow ochre. And when diluted, it, it's lovely in skies. This is a deep version, so maybe you need a lighter version for sky, but for baked goods, for instance, for food. But even for sky, once you Water it down. It is it's very beautiful versions. PBR7. Then there is a yellow ochre light. Let's see how they compare. PY42, which is usually a more opaque pigment. Very yellowish glowing texture. It's not so opaque, this one. Hmm. 
nice yellow ochre it's a light version wonder how the deep would be but i haven't bought it now let's go to Bansiena, one of my go-to colors in a palette this is really flagship color if i like this i like the brand if i don't like this mm. pbr7 you know that uh, some brands would use uh, pr101 which is more orangey but this is also quite orangey it's beautiful this Bansiena, very rich oh i'm contaminating the yellow ochre Mm, this is a very nice Valenciana. Look at this. I love the value range. And it's very nice because it has an orangey undertone and it's granulating. Don't amber. Still PBR7. Should be a dark brown with a yellowish undertone. Let's see how it behaves. This burnt amber. Mm, it behaves very very well see that the flow on paper is not the most extraordinary it stays quite put but for some people that can be an advantage for urban sketches for instance could be an advantage and um, it's lovely it's very warm it's very nice nice value range granulating mm, nice approved now warm sepia you know that i have a soft spot for sennelier warm sepia she's my favorite sepia oh this is really too much so i will put it in a pan my hands are full of sepia now Let's see, because most sepias are very cold, but this is a warm version. I wouldn't call this a sepia, it's not dark enough, but it has a lovely hue. It's a PBR7, PBK9, and PR177. And it's very nice. It's like a dark burnt amber or Van Dyke. It's not sepia, but it's really nice. It's granulating, how lovely it is. I like it, very nice. And now paints grey. Let's see the difference with indigo. Indigo is not blue at all. Let's see the paint grey. This is ultramarine blue and black. Yes, very nice paints grey. Very, very nice, very dark. Good alternative to black. If you don't want to use black, and there is no black in this collection of mine, you can use this wonderful paints gray, which is also very granulating thanks to the presence of PB29, ultramarine blue, which is a very granulating blue. So it's a granulating paints gray, if you like granulation. So flown paper, once again, is not the best in this blend, but um, you don't really have to on paper if you don't want to you can want them sometimes when you work wet on wet but if you work wet on dry for a quick sketch a uh, brand that stays put can be nice i wash my hand three times but they still have paint on but um it's okay forgive me okay now these paints are dry i have just written here the colors that i have uh, poured in pans and uh, that I have put in a small tin. I have to remember, I need to put a, a swatch card, mini swatch card here. I have to remember the brand. But uh, let's talk about these colors. First of all, now that they're dry, some of them are shiny, which is not something that I appreciate very much. Uh, the cobalt blue turquoise, light, slightly shiny. This uh, flesh tint, pink medium is shiny. This uh, red scarlet is somewhat shiny because, uh, maybe because of binder separation, I don't know, but um, 
some of them had a gummy texture so I think that in the formulation there is something imperfect but uh, despite this uh, there are some colors that uh, I really adore and that I would recommend uh, to you and uh, let's go through them okay India yellow brown lake it's very nice uh, version of uh, quinacridone gold hue the baroque red this is really wonderful it's a wonderful transparent uh, alternative to red iron oxide uh, transparent uh, red iron oxide uh, or uh, to quinacridone burnt orange it's really gorgeous it's it's glorious color i i'm in love with this i so happy I bought this. Then I like the violets very much. I like both the cobalt and the manganese, but the gum manganese uh, even more because of this uh, soft, uh, cloudy texture, this uh, um, heavy granulation. Uh, I think I'm going to use them both very much in sky, for instance. The blues are also very, very nice. Indigo is really terrible. It's almost, it is almost green once dry. And whereas the cobalt and the ultramarine are absolutely lovely, are um, wonderful to paint, a joy to spread on paper, and uh, they're beautiful. The manganese blue deep, although made up with four pigments, is a very, very interesting color. And uh, the cobalt turquoise, too bad for the shine because they're nice. I love the green earth version. It's cloudy also, it's very nice. And the earth colors are also okay. The paint spray is very nice with this granulation. So, they have so many colors that you have to choose. Uh, some colors are worth buying. I have uh, shown you which one I like very much. I hate, simply hate some of the pastel colors like the Naples yellow reddish, but this uh, flesh tint is horrible for me. So opaque. Um, one dry is not so bad as wet because uh, it has an orangey undertone that can maybe be really used in quick sketches for, you know, faces of people when you have small people in urban sketching. Yes, you could use this and the fact of being opaque, you can go over the other color, so it could be not so bad. So now that I think about it, I don't hate it so much. But uh, I hate the fact that they use so many fugitive colors, although they say that they don't use fugitive colors, but um, they do. So you need to watch my video, other videos online, because I know there are. Uh, some other YouTubers have reviewed these paints and uh, they have been compared to Kuretake and Saitambi. I don't agree at all because you have all the information on pigments, whereas in Kuretake and Saitambi, there is absolutely no information and there is such a huge choice of colors. But um, if you happen to uh, come across a sale as I have, it's worth trying some colors, especially some of them. So, thanks for having watched this video with me. I hope you liked it and uh, I hope this was entertaining. If you have liked it, uh, thumb up if you haven't thumb down. And if you would like to see more of my videos, you can always subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot and ciao from Italy. Bye bye, see you soon. Oh.